David, you're one of the few uh, reporters out there who actually follows what the vice president does and says and uh, how she works uh, in situations like this around the world. Uh, what was your reading of how she handled this weekend? I thought she handled it very well. It's a very tough task. It's a tough task to go into the region, uh, to speak the truth about Hamas, uh, to speak the truth about the casualties amongst the Palestinians, uh, to do it to uh, each of the leaders that matters to us in the region. Um, but it's also tough to do what she did, to look ahead, to talk about the day after. Since this conflict began, I'm told that within the White House, she has been a champion for focusing on the day after, for being as strategic in our approach to this uh, as we are uh, attentive to tactical details. Uh, and that's what she was talking to these regional leaders about. She was able to have the conversations that the president had intended to have when he went to Israel, but he was unable to have if you recall, because of the uh, bombing at the Baptist Hospital in Gaza. The uh, the principles, the first two things she mentioned, that she was uh, trying to get uh, these Middle Eastern governments to support reconstruction and security. Reconstruction means those countries need to contribute significant financial resources to the reconstruction of Gaza. I think that's the hope of the White House. Uh, and I think the feedback that they got is that it'll be possible once you get other preconditions met. I think one of those preconditions, frankly, is going to be the departure of Bibi Netanyahu as prime minister, which is something that many Israelis expect to have happen. I think another of those preconditions is the revitalization of the leadership of the Palestinian Authority, because I believe it's the U.S. expectation that the Palestinian Authority steps in, fills the political void left by Hamas in both Gaza and the West Bank, and that they represent the best negotiating hope to get towards a two-state solution, which once again is the goal of the United States. The uh, vice president there on the five principles she mentioned, one of them stands out, uh, no reduction in territory for Gaza. And that is something that has been discussed uh, by some uh, Israeli officials. Yes, well, you know, within uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's coalition, the small group around him, there have been a lot of rather pernicious ideas discussed. Uh, one is reduction in territory. Another one is the relocation of the residents of Gaza out of Gaza or the thinning out of Gaza. Another is Israeli reoccupation and control. And in her five principles, uh, the vice president was extremely clear. The U.S. opposes all of those things. Yeah, and, and that was... Uh... Uh, matched with uh, the very strong statement of support for Israel that is included in the same statement. It's one of it's one of those speeches that that examines every facet of what the administration has to deal with every day on this. It's one of the toughest diplomatic balancing acts I've ever seen. Uh, clearly, Israel has a right to self defense. Clearly, what Hamas did was commit atrocities. It's indefensible, and they no longer can play a role in the region. But the United States also plays the role of the spokesperson, if you will, for part of the international community, urging Israel to use restraint. One of the messages delivered by the vice president was that the lessons of the war in the north of Gaza have to be applied now as Israel moves into the south of Gaza. And what that means is fewer civilian casualties.